In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can calculate different measures of risk using historical financial data. So some of the standard measures of risk that we think about in financial markets are, first of all, the variance or standard deviation of returns. And these are both measures of the total risk or the total variation in returns about the average. Another common measure of risk is beta. Beta is our measure of systematic risk and that is a standardised measure of the covariance between uh, the stock or portfolio's returns and the market return. And last of all, we know that unsystematic risk is the firm specific component of risk. So let's jump into doing these calculations. So what I've got here is the spreadsheet that we've been working on from previous videos. I've got a price index for both the portfolio and the market index. And from my earlier video, I've got my uh, arithmetic mean, monthly returns, return on the market, and my risk-free rate here. So first of all, if I want to calculate the variance of my portfolio returns, I just need to know that the formula is equals VAR, open parentheses, and then I'm just going to highlight that series of cells, the monthly returns for the portfolio, and press enter. Okay, so what I've got here is that the variance of my uh, portfolio returns is 0 0.0032. I can do the same calculations for the market, equals VAR, highlight the cells, and I get the variance of the market portfolio. Now, to calculate the standard deviation of returns, again, standard deviation is just another measure of total risk. Uh, standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And the reason we think in terms of standard deviation is because standard deviation is measured in, measured in single units, whereas variance is actually measured in units squared. So variance, intuitively, is, is a little bit hard for us to, to theoretically uh, conceptualise. It's a statistical terminology, uh, statistical value, but uh, one that's a, a bit difficult if we're thinking in practice as to what it actually means. So standard deviation measured in single units, and the way we calculate that is equals STDEV is the formula. We highlight the series of data, and we get a standard deviation of returns. Now an alternative way I could have done that, or a way I could basically quickly check that result, is we know standard deviation should just be the square root of the variance. So I can down here type, give me the square root of my variance value, and we can see it's exactly the same as my generated standard deviation, so either approach would be fine. And in fact, what you're going to find is that when we do these uh, calculations throughout this course, there's always many ways that you can get to the same answer, and as long as uh, you generate the correct uh, value, the way that you got that is irrelevant. So we'll do the same now for my return on my market, so standard deviation of market returns, and there it is. So these are my measures of total risk. Next uh, measure of risk to consider is beta. So as I said earlier, beta is a measure of the covariance between uh, the excess returns of the stock and excess returns of the market. And where beta actually comes from is the CAPM, the Capital Asset Pricing Model. So let me give you a really quick explanation as to what beta actually is, and this helps to understand how we calculate it. So what we can see on this sheet here is on the, on the first row, of actually giving you the basic CAPM model that you've seen before. That the expected return of a portfolio should be equal to the risk-free rate plus, should be plus, my apologies, plus beta times return on the market less the risk-free rate. Okay, And what I can do is I can take this risk-free rate to the other side. So I've got excess return on my portfolio on the left equals beta times excess return on the market on my right. So basically, all this is saying is that excess returns of the stock should be a function of excess returns of the market multiplied by some moderating term, that, that term being beta, and again, beta being the exposure of stock returns to market returns. So the CAPM actually assumes that expected returns are entirely explained by this term, by changes in the excess return of the market and by that particular stock or portfolio's exposure to market factors. Now when we run a regression model, what we're actually doing is getting historical observations and we're fitting a line of best fit that explains the relationship between excess portfolio returns and excess market returns. So because we're fitting a straight line, what we've got to think about is the mathematical equation of a straight line. So in maths, we know that the equation of a straight line equals y equals mx plus b. So the y value equals the gradient or the slope times the x value plus some intercept term. Few points to note here, that 
in the cap m equation, we actually don't have an intercept term. That's because we assume that y, our excess returns of our portfolio, is entirely explained by beta times excess return on the market. This intercept would actually be uh, additional returns above and beyond or below the expected return that, that we think that we uh, should theoretically generate. And as we'll show in a few future video presentation, that intercept is actually our Jensen's alpha. It's a measure of portfolio abnormal returns. But sticking with this for now, so what we can see just substituting back in, my Y value is just my excess return on my portfolio. My X value here is just my excess return on the market. Uh, B, the intercept we're assuming is zero. And the slope is beta. Beta is the slope, which is uh, in statistical terms known as the coefficient. So what I obviously need to do is I need to calculate a series of excess returns of the portfolio, a series of excess returns of the market, and then use my regression to come up with an estimate of M, my gradient. So how I'll do that. So return on my portfolio less the risk-free rate and return on the market less the risk-free rate. Okay, so for each of those, I'm going to say my excess return is simply for this month, portfolio return less risk-free rate. Do the same for my market, so the monthly market return less the risk-free rate. And I can drag those values down. So here I've now got my series of excess return of the portfolio and excess return of the market. Okay, I'm now going to click on the data ribbon and come across to data analysis. Now if this doesn't appear on your Excel, it means you need to add it in. And the way you can add it in is by clicking File, Options, add-ins, click go down the bottom here, and just make sure this analysis tool pack here is, is ticked as it is with mine. Okay, so I'm going to data analysis, and the model I'm running here is a regression. So I'm going to click OK, run a regression model. I'm going to get rid of the data that's in there at the moment. So from before, remember, my Y is my excess return of my portfolio, and my X is my excess return on the market. So keeping that in mind, it's saying, what is my Y range? Well, that's going to be this series in column I, which is the excess return on my portfolio. What about my X? My X is my excess return on the market, so that's in column J. So I'm going to uh, select those values. And importantly for a little bit later on, I'm going to make sure this box down here, residuals, is ticked. And I'm going to click OK. So here's my regression output. Okay, a few important points to note is what this actually uh, tells us. So my R squared here, this is actually telling us how well the model fits the data. Uh, an R squared of 0.82 means that 82% of variation in excess returns of my portfolio can actually be explained by this model. So this is actually saying that the model works quite well. But what's most important, remember from before, that my slope, which is my, uh, in statistical terms, my coefficient, is my beta. So the coefficient on the X value is this value here, 1.72, sorry, 1.172, and that is my measure of beta. So if I come back up here, my measure of beta is just simply equal to, I can just select that, where was I, select that value, and that's my beta. Now just quickly, just to verify that value and to verify the process that I've just been through, what we know is that the beta of the market should be equal to 1. So let's actually run this again where we're going to calculate the beta of the market. All that would change in that particular case is why my Y on this particular side here is actually excess returns of the market. So what I'm saying is excess return on the market equals beta times excess return on the market. So if I was to manually calculate the beta of the market to prove that it equals 1, in that case my Y value would be the excess return of the market. That's the portfolio I'm trying to calculate the beta of. My X remains the same because the right hand side is always beta times excess return of the market. Okay. I click OK or it doesn't like it because I've used the same values, but that's just because it will generate a, uh, a value of beta that is equal to 1. So we know that this value here will actually be 1. So I've calculated my beta for my, my portfolio. The last thing I want to look at is my unsystematic risk. So unsystematic risk, remember, is firm-specific risk. So it's basically a measure of variation in the risky portfolio's returns that isn't explained by beta. So it, it's variation in portfolio returns that's not explained uh, by movements in the excess returns of the market as a whole. And where we get that from is coming back to my regression output from before, you'll recall I ticked the box where I asked for this plot of residuals. 
Okay, what the residual is, is that for each observation, and here I've got 626 observations, corresponding with, if I select this data here, you can see I've actually got 626 monthly returns. So each of these is uh, for each monthly returns. The residual is the difference between the theoretical return as per the CAPM. So the, the return of the excess return of the portfolio we would expect to get simply just beta times excess return of the market in that stock. And the difference between the actual return and that theoretical value is our residual. So when we're looking at the residuals across time, the variation in the residuals or the spread of the residuals is a measure of how spread apart the data is from that uh, security market line. And the bigger the spread of observations, the bigger the unsystematic risk. So what I can actually do is take the standard deviation of those residuals. It's a measure of the spread of those firm specific observations. And this value here is actually our measure of unsystematic risk. If I go back into my data here, so if I want my measure of unsystematic risk, it's just equal to that value I've just calculated. Okay. Now, once again, the unsystematic risk of the market will be zero because the market is perfectly diversified. It has no unsystematic risk. And in a nutshell, what I've done is I've got my total measure of risk, a standard deviation here, and I can then look at what proportion of that is due to unsystematic or firm-specific risk. And obviously, uh, the balance must be the, the proportion due to my systematic risk. So that's calculating different measures of different traditional measures of risk within the mean variance framework uh, using Microsoft Excel.